guys, welcome back to my channel today. In today's video, we are going to be doing my review, my swatches, my demo on the new Natasha Denona bronze palette, as well as the new Natasha Denona bronze cheek palette. I did pick up both of them from Sephora recently, and I will say I have one that I regret buying and one that I love. So stay tuned for all of my thoughts on everything. I'm gonna show you the swatches, how they apply, my thoughts on everything, both these palettes, and whether or not I think they are worth the buy or not. If you wanna know more about these palettes, then just keep watching. All right, so let's get right on into this video. I am going to be talking about the bronze palette first. I do have some comparison swatches as well to show you, and I will tell you all about what I think of this baby. So a lot of you guys, and I mean a lot of you, really, really want to get this palette. There's a lot of you guys, when I talked about it in my most recent video about makeup I was excited about, I mentioned these two products and you guys were also so on board with these two. It's so exciting. So this is the summer release from Natasha Denona. The outer exterior packaging matches the palette itself. It's a very reflective bronze packaging. You can see that right here. And for myself, I actually ordered it off of Sephora Canada. It's actually two days since I ordered it because because it was live on Tuesday and I got it today being Thursday. So that's extremely fast for Canada. Definitely not the norm. <laughs> but this bronze eyeshadow palette retails for 87 Canadian dollars or 65 American dollars. It is the midi size from Natasha Denona's lines. So she does have larger palettes than she has kind of what I would call medium large, which are essentially like Sunset, Lila, Biba. Those are larger palettes yet. Then she's got midi size. So this is one of her midi size palettes I call it the medium size so the price point is a little bit more approachable compared to some of her larger palettes and on the inside oh my goodness this is a beautiful color story I'm gonna show you guys here and I'll also show you guys close up what these shades look like. These shades are very approachable to all makeup lovers in my opinion, from the beginner all the way to the expert. When you can see a shade range like this, to me I think you can see looks coming together really quickly. Natasha does have some palettes that have what I call more of like a jump between colors, meaning that they have like a red, then a yellow, then an orange. Although they go together, they're a little bit bolder and more of a harsher jump between shades. Makeup enthusiasts would say that that means that there's depth or there's complexity to the product, to the palette color story. And some may say that this is kind of bland or boring considering how similar these shades kind of go all together. But I actually think that she did this on purpose because this is already the midi size palette offering. So it's not the most expensive that she's got, but it's kind of in mid range price. So I think that she's kind of formulating these palettes so that they're approachable to everyone. So you can easily put looks together, you can easily grab a shimmer and a matte and they work beautifully. There's really no thought process involved. So basically you can not really screw this up. You can put beautiful looks together without thinking about it. So looking at this palette, we do actually have a lot more shimmers than we have mattes in this one. And that is actually a critique that a lot of you guys were telling me you were a little bit nervous about because some of you prefer more mattes than shimmer. Whereas for me, I love shimmer, so bring on as much shimmer as possible. The mattes in this palette are just incredibly workable with all skin tones, I think. I think this palette is gonna highlight medium to deep skin tones beautifully. So out of this entire palette, there are 15 shades in here. There are six mattes the rest of them being shimmer. So that is a ton. So nine shimmers, six mattes, 15 shades total. This is amazing. I love how these swatch so incredibly smooth. I will say that the shimmer shades are very foiled. They're very pigmented. They're wet looking, especially silk down here. Silk looks very, very wet. I will show you the swatches in a little bit, but it's just like that gorgeous, glistening, hydrating looking shadow. So, so beautiful on the lid. Some of these mattes, I would say for the most part, they swatch pretty creamy. There's a few on the drier end, but when it comes to swatches, they're both fairly consistent with just minor tweaks of a little bit of dryness in some of the deeper shades, a little bit creamier and richer in some of the more beigeier neutral shades. In the past, Natasha has actually had some difficulty with some deeper mattes in particular. Sometimes they're a bit drier, a little bit chalkier on the lid, but I actually really, really like Deep Dive 
in this palette. It is a really beautiful deep kind of eggplant color. It's actually over on the top here and I actually like how she diversified this palette with touches of purple. Not something I would actually think about would go together but now that I see it, it goes beautifully together. So this one is beautiful. This shimmer called Rhodium is really beautiful also. It really just brings the bronzes and the red kind of tones together and just looks absolutely stunning on the lid. So for my look today, I started with a Sigma E38 brush and that's basically like a, you know, diffuser brush. I went in all over my lid with the beach shade, which is a matte. It's a beautiful beige matte and it blended effortlessly on my lid. As you can see, it is still deeper than my skin tone. So that's why I was kind of saying that this palette will really amplify medium to deep skin tones because the lightest matte even to me is already pulling really dark and I have a, like a lighter skin tone. So I think this would just look stunning on medium to deep skin tones, but let's continue. <laughs> Next, I went in with a Luxie 229 brush. This is where I kind of smoked out the outer edge of my lid with the shade Rhodium. Has some beautiful plum kind of aspects to it and it's just so, so beautiful. I really wanted to work with the purples in this palette and just kind of put some smoke with the purple in it because I really want to see how it all come together and I'm really, really impressed. Next, I went in with my Sonia G Builder Pro Brush and this is something I wanted to use just to kind of loosely put a my first gold shimmer shadow on the inner corner and then working up to the middle of the lid. So the shade that I used is True Bronze here. This is a beautiful bronzy gold shimmer, of course. It definitely has a foiled look to it, but when applied with a brush, it's a bit more diffused, a little bit more muted. If you use your fingers with this, it's going to be amazing. That's the beauty about her shadows in particular is that if you want to really amplify pigment, just use your finger. It's awesome. Awesome. Lastly, I went in with a MAC 248 with the shade Silk, which is really, really beautiful. It has more of a light bronze kind of shimmer to it versus the True Bronze, which has really got more of that yellow gold undertone to it. The Silk adds a little bit more spotlight to the center of the lid, and this is also a brush that's more flat, a little bit more dense, so it applies the shimmers beautifully. The one thing that I did find, and you'll actually see as I was applying this look together, was that I actually did my whole day before I even got this palette. So I had my eyeliner and my mascara already on and I was like, oh man, I don't really want to remove that. I want to put this eyeshadow over it, but is it going to mess up my entire face or my eyeliner or whatever? And it's crazy because working with this palette, I had no fallout. <laughs> and that's really, really rare. What I did find, however, though, is there's some kick up when you're actually picking up these shadows with the brushes. So just be aware that you do have some kick up in the pans. And I did find I was kind of blowing off the excess off of my pans from time to time in between steps. So like I said, when it comes to the swatches, the mattes are the ones that have a little bit of variability with them, I think, with regards to some of them being just a touch drier, some of them being a little creamier under the finger kind of when you're swatching them. But I found the shimmers to be really consistent, especially the true bronzy kind of shimmers that really pack a pigment punch. Really, really beautiful and so far so good. I think this is a quality palette, so definitely one that's worth the money. Now let's get into some palette comparisons. I will start with actually Mini Nude. So Mini Nude is one that I think has fairly similar shades to the bronze palette. This is Mini Nude here, and as you can see, there's only two mattes in here, but I believe that both of these mattes have very similar comparisons or dupes in the bronze palette. So they're very, very close. I'll show you the video clip here about how they're looking side by side. They're nearly identical, so that is something to consider. We also have a couple shimmers in the Mini Nude that are really close to the bronze palette palette. Not identical, but they do have some similarities between them. So out of all of my Natasha palettes, Mini Nude has the most closeness to the bronze palette. The next palette that I wanted to compare bronze to is Sunset. Now here is where I really didn't see that many duplicates between them and not even shades that were that close. Obviously the two bronze shades in the Sunset palette have the most like closeness or the most similarities to some shimmers in the bronze palette. So as you can see, the one on the bottom is a little bit lighter and then the one on the top is a little bit orangier than each other. So although similar, they're going to translate very closely on the lid, obviously. They're gonna have the very same bronzy kind of look with very slight shiftness to the undertone but not that many dupes between them, which is obviously a good sign for a Natasha Denona collector like myself. 
Now the good news between bronze and gold is that gold shimmers in here, I couldn't find one single dupe between them. So this is gold here. Gold is much more of a white kind of gold undertone or yellow gold. This really is a bronzy brownie kind of gold undertone to the shimmers. So really the shimmers between the two palettes are not even close. They're not even worth swatching side by side because they're literally nowhere near the same. So that was something that I was kind of interested in myself was the golds or the bronzy kind of golds and bronze, are they gonna be similar to her gold palette? But they're absolutely not similar. Next, I wanted to compare bronze to Biba. And here's where I found a couple similarities, but like I said, nothing that insane. Like there were two that were pretty close. We have Prairie here that looks really, really close to ridge in the bronze palette. I'll show you here in the swatches. As you can see, they look very, very close, like nearly identical when it comes to how they swatch side by side. But when it comes to the shimmers, honestly, the shimmer here, which is Shine up in Biba, is really not close to any of the bronze shimmers. Because Biba has more mattes to offer versus the bronze palette, if you happen to have the Biba palette, I actually think they work really well together. So if you're wanting more of like a matte selection, you can pull from this palette to start the building blocks of the look that you're wanting. And then you can go in with more shimmers from bronze, but they do work beautifully. They're very like compatible with each other. I think they just look so stunning together. The last one I wanna talk about is Sunrise. And this is also another one that doesn't have that many close shades at all. Like the two that I saw that were closest are still really different from each other. But here we have Sunrise, which is also a midi sized palette, the medium sized. And you can see here that the color story is very, very different, right? I figured maybe this one here, which is Day Spring. Day Spring, there we go. If that one would be pretty close to any of the bronze shades. And when I was swatching them, the closest was True Copper, but even still, True Copper is much more of a copper, much more of an orangey undertone versus the Day Spring shades. You can tell they're different. And then I was looking kind of for like a ready undertone kind of shade to kind of highlight next to Azalea, which I thought might be close to one in bronze, but they're also really, really different. So this is kind of just reiterating that Natasha did a great job with staying pretty original. She has a ton of other palettes, so sometimes, you know, overlapping and duplication is kind of inevitable, but she did a great job with making this standalone compared to the rest of her creations, which I really appreciate. So overall, do I think that this bronze palette is a good buy? I absolutely do. I think this is one that I can confidently say is going to be a very top performing palette in her collection and one that I do think is going to be a favorite by many. I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask me how I think this palette ranks now because I just did a ranking video with all of my Natasha palettes. Leela is still first. You know what, I'm gonna place bronze. Ooh, because I'm a shimmer girl, I honestly really, really love shimmer. I'm gonna put bronze in third place, which is crazy. So Leela and then gold and then bronze. And then I'm gonna put Biba after that because Biba is still beautiful, I love it. But because it offers more mattes, I'm gonna beat that one out with this one because I'm definitely a shimmer girl at heart. Both of them are beautiful, obviously, but if you're wanting more shimmer, this is the way to go. <laughs> Next, I wanna talk about the regret that I regret purchasing and one that I'm most likely going to be returning now that I've tried the formulas in this palette. This is one that a lot of you guys were kind of curious about how it was gonna translate on a lighter skin tone because a lot of these shades in the bronze cheek palette are actually fairly dark. So you guys were wondering how that was gonna look on my skin or on lighter skin tones in general. So this is the bronze cheek palette here. You can see that it's really reflective just like its mother, which is the bronze eyeshadow palette. And this is introducing a new formula, I believe. I think this is new to her, the, the Bounce Cream formula. So you can see it's in the top row of this uh, palette here. And I like that she has that separator to kind of separate the cream products from the powder so the powder doesn't get into the cream because that's often problematic. So I love that she's got a little window here. We have the Bounce Cream Glow, which is a highlight, and we have the Bounce Cream Blush. I did use both of them today, and what I will say is that upon swatching this formula, I was a little bit disappointed. It's a little bit like drier in consistency than I thought it was gonna be. I was expecting really like a beautifully silky, smooth, creamy formula, one that would feel very moisturizing and hydrating on the skin where I can just kind of buff it in with, with a fingertip 
or if I did it with a sponge, those are kind of like best application tips, I would say, for something like this. But to me, it kind of tugged at the skin as I was trying to blend it in. It's definitely like drier than I thought, even upon swatch. Applying to the skin, same thing. It just wasn't my favorite. I really, really want a richness to a cream product. I'm not a cream girl by any means. I'm slowly getting into creams again, like just for summer and some warmer months. But when I'm looking for a cream product, it really has to be stellar because it's just not my top favorite. I would probably prefer a powder over a cream at this point. So the fact that this is a drier, chalkier, powdery kind of highlight and blush formula is just really not for me. And this is basically 50% of this palette. So a little bit disappointing there. Before I continue, this bronze cheek palette in Canadian dollars is 73 Canadian dollars, which is extremely high. The palette itself is $87, so we're almost at the price of a palette, which the quality is exceptionally better than this. So if you're picking between the two, 100% I recommend the eyeshadow palette. I would skip on this one if you have any doubts whatsoever, because you really, really need to love it for that kind of price. Just not something that I would recommend to you guys at this point for that bounce creamy formula alone. The, um, the price in American dollars is 55, so there's a $10 difference in American dollars between the products, which I also think is insane. So definitely get the eyeshadow palette if you're picking between the two. The lip glosses that she actually released with this collection just didn't appease me at all. And actually, I didn't hear a ton from you guys that you were really interested in those, so I did skip them this time. I just think that her glosses haven't really been a hit for me, so I just kind of stayed away this time. But I do have to say that the highlight formula in here is a lot better. It's the Super Glow Highlight Formula, one of my favorites. This is one that's really beautiful. It's Super Glow Nude, and when I was applying it to my cheek, it is really blinding. Like, I really, really like this. Obviously, over the cream, it's insane, but when you swatch it by itself, it's also really blinding too. And this is a gorgeous, consistent highlight formula from her. I will say that my favorite highlight is still this one from Natasha. I've actually hit pan on it. It's the all over body shimmer. This was actually, whoa. <laughs> this was actually even before the super glows came out. This is still one of my favorite highlights of all time. I haven't seen this one on Sephora, so I don't know if she's discontinuing it or if it's still on her site. When it comes to the other shade though in this quad, which is the Super Glow Bronze, this one is definitely more catered to a medium or deep skin tone, 100%. Very, very difficult for me to apply this highlight without looking streaky on my skin. So I did lightly tap this over my cheek and I will say with my lighting currently being optimal with the studio lights and everything, it doesn't look that bad. But in the sunlight though, I do think the sun is going to pick up more of the bronze undertone to this highlight and it's going to look a little streaky in like actual sunlight. So just keep that in mind. It's um, definitely more of a medium to deeper skin tone highlight, I think personally, but this like bounce formula, I'm just not a fan. And how expensive it is, you guys, you have to love it. So this is one that I think is a regret for sure. One that I do think you can skip on if you are interested in the collection at all. This eyeshadow palette, worth the money for sure. Hands down, you will love it. I don't think you'll have any regrets, but the cheek palette, if you are on the fence, just wait until you can get into a store because you'll see what I mean. It's just not a overwhelmingly show-stopping formula, that cream one. It's just a little bit disappointing. Anyways, guys, what do you think of the bronze collection from Natasha Denona? What are your thoughts? Do you have it? I am super excited that I was able to get this fairly early for you guys, considering Canadian shipping can take a million years sometimes. So do let me know all of your thoughts. If you have any questions on this palette or on the cheek palette, I'd be happy to answer them in the comment section. And until my next one, guys, take care. Thanks so much for watching. Bye guys.